I think every woman in medicine has had experience of gender bias, whether it's direct or indirect. It's pretty pervasive in the profession at all levels. It's a hugely topical issue at the moment for a variety of reasons. So it's really exciting to kind of have so many incredibly influential and pretty inspiring women in one room to kind of talk about some of the issues that we've faced across the career path. Why should we have equality? You know, I've been asked that. What's the business case for equality? Um, well, the, the prize is not to have a default model that excludes 50% of the world. If we don't call out behavior and actions that are taking us away from equity, then we are complicit. I'm a woman in medicine, I'm a woman in science, and that while women in science are marginalized and mocked, there are changes that need to be made, and I would like to be part of what makes them. We cannot accept the current status quo, and we have to work intelligently uh, with our male colleagues to try and learn to speak up and to try and teach other people to help us speak up, and more importantly, to teach people to listen. My work and my research examines the choices that we make about whether to speak up and the choices we make about who to listen to. And actually, you know, the, the consequences can cost lives. I mean, literally within the NHS, can cost lives. One thing I do notice about the medical profession is the plethora of titles and labels and they all convey different things. They all convey expectations and assumptions around status and authority and who has the right to speak and who should be listened to. Now if the medical profession wishes to alter the culture around speaking up and listening up, you have to talk about these labels and the stories around these labels and what they convey and you have to disrupt them. If you don't have a diverse team, then you don't think about things that you don't think about. So we talk about unconscious bias, but we also talk about the unknown unknowns. So if you don't even know about it, how can you recognise it? Quite often women have to fight harder um, and have to prove themselves more. And health technology is no different to health, I would say. And one of the things I would say to everybody is champion the people in your team. You know, if they're doing something and it's good and it's novel, give them a voice, give them a platform to talk about it. The question I'm often asked from men is, well, what can I do? I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing. And my answer is always the same. Ask, listen and believe to other people's experiences, even when you haven't or we haven't witnessed them ourselves. It's important for us to understand the perspective of other groups. We do know that there's a lack of representation of women at senior leadership levels and that more balanced leadership correlates with improved outcomes across a range of measures. So it does impact or can impact on patient care. It is everyone's business and we should all care about it. We know that generally speaking, where there's gender equality, the world is a better place. When we think about issues such as gender bias in medicine, we should think about all of the other identities that interplay to contribute to different types of outcomes for different types of men, women and other genders. And that means bearing in mind gender, but also kind of interpreting those experiences through the lenses of sexual orientation, through able-bodiedness, through faith, through race and ethnicity. So all of these things kind of like interplay to show us that gender actually means different things to different people, even if they're of the same quote unquote gender. The challenges I face as a disabled person can often be quite similar to the challenges I face as a woman in medicine. You get a lot of assumptions made about you, you get a lot of presumptions about what profession you're gonna go in, what specialty you're gonna be doing. So I think intersectionality needs to be at the basis of all we do in terms of equalities work. So I'm really hoping that this conference today is the beginning of a long ongoing conversation. The Medical Women's Federation and the BMA have been around for a long time and we do tend to cross over and work together on various things. So I hope that this is really the beginning of something very exciting for gender equality and other equalities within the profession as a whole.